<laughs> Hi, pipe smokers. Yeah. This is Paul the Pipe Guy, live from the outskirts of Rochester, New York, in the United States of America. And it is December 6th at 5.45 p.m. New York Eastern Standard Time, which means it's 9.45 p.m. in the U.K. Yeah. So we've got a K. Woody 600 right here. Look at that briar. These, uh, the K. Woody 500s and 600s series were made between 1957 and and 1969, they were an entry-level pipe, but what happened is they were so popular, they ran out of the regular briar and had to use, like, extremely, unbelievably good briar. This is a bowl number 05. Look at that briar. Oh, ain't that gorgeous. And inside of it, we have some... Uh, Peterson Mixture 965, which I actually bought on 1219 of 2022. Uh, it's an English blend. It's got uh, uh, Brown Cavendish accompanied with uh, Light Orient Tobaccos and Small Latakia Leaves English Mixture. Yeah, rehydrated it all up because she dried out, you know. And so there she is. Let's start something on fire. Yeah. Mm. Mm. A lot of people, they don't like these K Woodies. And the reason is, I mean, the K Woody has really unbelievable briar. reason that they don't like them is because you have what's called a stinger system, which is made of aluminum, aluminum, and it has three holes on the newer ones, four holes on the older ones. So your smoke goes down through there, down through here. And if you don't clean those every single time, your draw is going to suck. I mean, as it is with their system that they have set up, um, versus like a 10 millimeter pipe or, pipe or whatever, or nine millimeter, whatever, I don't know, six millimeter. Yeah, the draw is about 15% less, but mm. keep them clean, they smoke good. Okay, Woody. Used to say back way back in the day that their system took burning tobacco, which is 850 degrees. By the time it went through their stinger system, reduced the smoke temperature to 85 degrees. What are we going to talk about? Let's talk about words. Mm -hmm. Words are very powerful. There's a few different kinds of words. There's words where you... Somebody says something bad to somebody else, something nasty or whatever... And that hurts the other person. Then there's words of faith where you say, this is going to happen. I believe this is going to happen. You know, and there's other people watching you and you're like, no, we are not going to fail. Maybe you become a little bit of a leader and an encourager. No, we're going to get it done. We can do this. Positive words. Then there's words of encouragement. You know, 
I want to give you some examples of those three. Nasty words, putting people down to their face, talking behind their back. You know, usually those kind of words come from people that somehow maybe they feel insecure about themselves or whatever. And for some people, they'll talk badly about other people or they'll be nasty to other people because maybe they feel inept that they're not good enough. So if they put you down with their words and crush your spirit or attempt to, they're here, you're up here, they crush your spirit, they say bad things about you or whatever, they bring you down there. They make you feel bad. And all of a sudden, they don't feel so bad no more because they put you down. Those are bad words. Let's talk about words of encouragement, which I love because I, I don't like to spend time on negative things. But I do want to say the, that negative words, all right, if you're mean to somebody, you're talking behind their back and all that stuff, oh, so-and-so, or you're creating rumors with words out of your mouth, that's not good, man. Words are like bullets, okay? Now, I, I've hurt people in my life. I think all of you have, you know. Maybe you said some things that you regret. And I know I've said things I regret. But when those words come out that hurt other people, it's like a bullet coming out of a gun. Once you pull that trigger, once you release those words, that bullet comes out. Those words come out. It's the same thing. You can't ever call it back. Once that bullet leaves a gun, you can never call that bullet back. The thing with, with negative words, though, is that if you realize that you're wrong, you can go to that person, and I've done it thousands of times, and say, hey, you know, I, I said something that I shouldn't have, and I really feel bad about it, and it wasn't true, or I, I made you feel bad, and I want to apologize, and, you know, you ask for their forgiveness. That's all I'm going to say about the negative stuff. Let's talk about good stuff. Let's talk about words of encouragement. Let's talk about acts of encouragement. I've got a guy, and I don't like to share too much about the good things that I, that, that I do. I, I, try to do a lot of good things. I try to be a good person and so forth and definitely believe in God. I mean, I got this here, you know, I'm definitely a sinner. I ain't sitting here preaching at you, but that's the Holy Bible, which Bible to me stands for uh, basic instructions before leaving earth. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of good stuff in there. So we got this guy I want to talk about encouraging words. Got this guy at work. Um, he's in his, he's maybe 61 years old, a couple years older than me. Uh, I'll be celebrating my 59th birthday tomorrow on December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day. And uh, so it's, this is going to be my, that'll be my last Christmas in my 50s. <laughs> so we got this guy his last name is Glidden now they got a paint company called Glidden Paint maybe you guys across the pond don't know about it but you know anybody here in the United States has heard of Glidden Paint it's like a really really good top-end paint. So my 
my buddy here, he's on the maintenance crew. He's kind of, kind of quiet. But man, that guy can fix anything. All right. A lot of people, because he doesn't possess the uh, communication skills that other people do. He's kind of like Rain Man, if you remember the movie Rain Man. You know, super intelligent guy. Uh, Rain Man with Tom Cruise. Uh, nobody under 50 is going to know what that is. But, you know, so some people talk badly about him. They say he's stupid and this and that. And I'm like, no, he ain't. That guy can fix anything. So he wears these shirts that say his last name's Glidden. And he wears these shirts that are painter shirts, they're T-shirts. And it says Team Glidden on them. And so when I see him, you know, he usually doesn't have a smile on his face and I don't like to see that, you know, he's a good guy and does a good job and so forth. He might be a little different, but that's okay. We're all a little different in our own way. So, you know, I see him walking across the factory, you know, and it's like, hey, I'm not going to say his first name. I was like, hey, man, I'm glad you're here today because we got Team Glidden here. And when Team Glidden is here in our factory... I know everything's going to be okay. Let me say that again. Hey, man, it's good to see you. You know what? We ain't got no worries in this factory because we got Team Glidden here. And the guy's face just lights right up, man. That's all it takes is a little act of kindness. But, but it's the truth. You know, I'm pumping the guy up. You know, he goes around and people ride him like a donkey. and They don't treat him nicely. It, it makes me want to cry. And then, you know, those are encouraging words. I mean... <laughs> <coughs> you know, you, <coughs> I see certain people, <coughs> you know, they <coughs> come on and uh, <coughs> come to work and sometimes they look sad or whatever. And, you know, you go up to them, hey, man, how you doing, my brother? Give him a fist bust. Man, it's good to see you. You're doing a great job, man. I'm glad you're here. You know what? All of a sudden, that frown turns into... You can change someone's day with five seconds worth of, of words of encouragement. Now, I'm not the type of person... Uh, I, think it's, I think it's horrible when people beat, e uh, beat each other down <coughs> to make themselves feel better. I think that's a terrible thing. So I see different people that I work with, um, you know, and so forth. And, you know, like I said before, you know, you see somebody that's kind of sad or whatever or down. You walk up, hey, man, how's it going? You give them a high five or a fist bust. Man, it's good to see you. I'm glad you're here, man. I, I hear you've been doing a real good job, you know. How's things going? And all of a sudden, they go from like this. To like a beaming smile and I think it's important that we support and love one another and you know even strangers um, and I I don't want to get into this too much I don't like I said I don't like telling on myself some of the things that I've done but uh, remember I was down at the grocery store uh, this this summer and there was a woman, I bumped into her a couple of times, and, you know, she just seemed sad. She seemed sad. And 
you know, the, the good Lord up above put it on my heart. This woman, I don't know, I, I don't know what happened to her. Maybe, maybe she got bad news from the doctor. Maybe uh, her husband or boyfriend is mistreated. I don't know, but something not good was going on in her life. And so the Lord put it on my heart. I want you to go over here to the flower section. I don't want you to buy one bouquet. I want you to buy two. So I'm standing in line. I buy these things of flowers. I mean, two bouquets. They were beautiful, beautiful flowers. And the woman happened to come up to me in, in line right behind me at the cashier. And uh, so I said, look, I says, I want you to ring these up on two bills, my groceries, and then we'll do the flowers last. And the cashier's like, okay. Does all that. I look at the lady behind me and I got two bouquets. And I says, ma'am, I says, uh, my name is Paul and I'm not hitting on you. But I think that these would look beautiful on your kitchen table. Here's the receipt they're already paid for. Thought the cashier was going to cry. The woman, she's like, oh, I love those flowers. Those are my favorite flowers. How did you know? She says, you have a good day, ma'am. And I scooted the hell out of there, and she had a receipt. That's the kind of stuff that, if you're in tune, you know, with the big man upstairs, and, you know, you, you do kind things like that for people, kind gestures, and it can change your whole day. It can change their whole week. It can change your whole month. That person might have been thinking about going home and taking their own life and all of a sudden they realize hey you know what somebody somebody cared enough about me to do that I don't know but the things that you do that are positive even the small things can make monumental changes that can positively affect other people's lives so that's what I want to say about words and, and actions um, that's about all I got to say. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this pipe and make myself some dinner. And tomorrow, like I said, is going to be my 59th birthday. And, uh, I'm going to buy myself a nice steak. I'm going to make all the fixings to go with it. It's just me and my cat. Uh, nobody's coming over, but that's okay. I'm going to treat myself good probably talk to my mom and so forth and uh, life will be good. I'll come home and treat myself good. But we'll love one another and uh, and uh, and treat one another good. In fact, it says in here, Jesus Christ said, love one another as I have loved you. So I got to say, happy pipe smoking pipe smokers. You have a good night. We'll be back tomorrow for my birthday cigar smoke. I got a present from Wolf's Piper 62, and I'm going to smoke it after my dinner. Right now, Kelly the Killer Calico Cat's trying to get in. She's climbing up my screens. I got to go. Over and out. <laughs>